Hi, I'm Christy Wilhelmy from Garden Nerd, and today is part two of What's Eating My Plant. I got a few comments from some of you viewers out there and a couple questions into Ask Garden Nerd, and I put the list together, and here we go. First up, let's talk about aphids. Aphids are sucking insects. Their mouths pierce the flesh of plants and suck out the juices. And aphids come in all kinds of colors. You'll see them in gray, black, reddish orange, and green. And you can see in that last picture that the aphids are accompanied by ants because ants and aphids have a symbiotic relationship. They will taxi the aphids around and farm them, take them wherever they want to go in exchange for the sticky sweet substance called honeydew that they excrete. Yeah. So there are a couple ways that aphid damage shows up. One is you'll see curling leaves, puckering curling leaves. Usually that's on like citrus or the new growth, the new baby growth on certain plants. Um, otherwise, you just see the aphids on the undersides of leaves or in the, in the, at the growth tips, you know, at the young parts of the, of the plant. And those aphids are not going to go away on their own. You have to physically remove them and cut down on the population. So one of the ways you can do that is by putting out ant traps because, as I said, ants farm aphids. They help taxi them around. So if you put a boric acid-based ant trap out, like tarot baits or something like that, um, that will help reduce the ant population and so the aphid population will go down as well. Another thing you can do is jet blast off the aphids on the surface of the plant. Um, I don't know about you, but it's not something I can do staying dry. You end up, it all comes back at you, but it's fine, you know. Also, just these two fingers, squishing the aphids off with your fingers really usually does the trick. But I always go back to the soil food web where if you put down a layer of worm castings around the base of the plant on the soil, scratch it in, water it in, the plants will take up the, the chitinase, which is in worm castings, and it, that enzyme happens to dissolve the exoskeletons of soft-bodied insects like aphids and other sucking insects like mealybugs and whitefly. So, Anyway, you'll always hear me talk about worm castings as the first line of defense against things like aphids and other sucking insects. So, put down worm castings, jet blast off the, um, the physical presence of them, and put out some tarot baits and see what happens. You can use a soap spray, uh, the either homemade or store-bought soap spray, to spray on the aphids. But again, I always come back to the fact that if it's on a leaf you're planning to eat, I'd rather just take care of the problem without any sprays at all. Next up, tomato hornworms. Now in part one, I talked about green worms like cabbage worms that attack your brassicas and are usually eating holes in the center. With tomato hornworms and other green worms that are on your tomato plants and some of your other crops, they're usually eating holes as well, but usually in the tomato fruit itself. And you'll see droppings like in this picture, on the leaves surrounding it. Most of the time, that's what you see and not the tomato worm itself. The hornworm is really hard to see because it's green. So the trick for that, and I do have another video on this, but admittedly it kind of failed a bit because I, the batteries died in my black light. But you get a black light like this and you go out at night and you shine the black light on your tomato plants and the other crops that you're trying to find the critter for and they will glow in the dark. Ta-da! It's as simple as that. So you can usually find cheap black lights on Amazon or wherever you decide to buy stuff these days and um, go out at night, do a little reconnaissance, find them, locate them, pull them off, and squish them under your mighty shoe. Now there are, uh, there are a lot of other worms I would like to talk to you about. Uh, corn worms and army worms because tomato hornworms and corn worms are related and army worms are another thing that you'll find on corn. As you can see in this picture this is a very tiny black worm with yellow striping down the outsides and it will create damage that looks like this. Um, most of the time you'll find the, the army worms or the corn worms inside the stalk so they're hiding inside I can't even get one of these to show you but 
uh, they're hiding down inside the stalk. Uh, sometimes they're on the undersides of leaves, but check inside the stalk because they get to the tassels and start eating the tassels, and then your pollination becomes an issue once the plant matures. Oh, and one more thing about army worms and green worms. There is a spray that you can use. It has BT in it, which is short for Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a bacteria, and the bacteria basically is taken in by the insect, by the worm, the caterpillar, and it ruptures their intestines, so they die that way. Uh, it's the kind of thing that is said to affect some but not others, so it's something that I generally don't use because I don't want to I don't want to harm my good bugs, I just want to harm my bad bugs. So I'll leave it to you to decide whether you want to use BT or not. It is safe for organic use and it is used commercially all over the world. The next thing I want to talk to you about are slugs and snails. Now they leave that telltale trail, try and say that ten times fast, telltale trail, telltale trail, telltale trail, mm, almost. Uh, anyway, they leave a telltale trail of slime on your leaves, like in this picture you can see on our kale. And that is something that you can usually identify but not find the snail or the slug. Well, they are nocturnal. Snails and slugs come out at night, party, and then go home in the morning. So the trick to finding them is to come out in the morning before the sun hits the plants. And usually if you pull apart some leaves or lift up some stuff, you'll find them hanging out on the soil right underneath everything, or they're still on the leaves. And if you collect them in a coffee can and then you, you know, what they, the general rule of thumb is to drop them into a bucket of soapy water and then they drown. I'm a little more, I'm not a fan of that, I have to say, it just hurts me to, I want them to die happy. So what you can do is put out a pie pan of beer. They like beer. And you submerge the pie pan up to the soil level, uh, level with the edge of the pie pan change out the beer frequently because they like fresh beer and they go in and they drown but they're kind of dying drunk happy okay the other thing is if you can collect them into a, a coffee can or into a container and you can either hurl them out in the street or in my community garden we have a field next to us I hurl them into the field and if they can get back they can help themselves to whatever they want. Oh, and it's important to know what their eggs look like. So here's a picture of slug eggs. They look like little caviar. And uh, so if you find that in your garden, scoop them up and transport them somewhere else. And one more thing about snails and slugs. There's a natural predator that loves snails and slugs, and that is the opossum. The opossum eats snails, slugs, ticks, and a bunch of other stuff, and heck, they're the only native marsupial to North America. So welcome them into your yard. Don't try and scare them off. Another pest I'd like to talk to you about is flea beetles. Flea beetles are tiny, like fleas, black, like fleas, and they jump, like fleas, when you reach to touch them. They show up most of the time on eggplant, but sometimes also, you know, on tomatoes and peppers in the Solanaceae family. And they tend to poke little tiny holes in the leaf surface, so you see little shot holes all throughout the whole leaf. And um, they're kind of hard to catch because they jump. But the thing is, they, they aren't really a big deal in and of themselves. They are another pest that carries bacterial wilt, so it's a good idea to try and control them if you can. You can use a soap spray to treat flea beetles, uh, but the general rule of thumb is to use sticky traps because it's yellow and they're attracted to it and then you can catch them and toss the sticky trap. But I also like to plant a lot of nasturtiums because they're attracted to that. And if you surround your garden with beneficial insectary plants, you probably won't have too much of a problem with flea beetles to begin with. And the last bug I want to talk about today is soil gnats, which someone asked about. And, you know, soil gnats can sometimes cause damage on plants, but not that much. Uh, most of the time they're just a nuisance because they breed in potting soil, and sometimes you'll buy a bag of potting soil and it just comes that way. So uh, they, they desiccate and die if you let the soil dry down. So if you've got a bag of potting soil that you've used for something and then you suddenly have soil gnats, pour that soil out into a like a trough or something and or on a tarp and let it really dry down in the sun for a few days and then that will kill off any of the little eggs and whatnot in the soil and then you can bag it back up. 
So that's it for part two of What's Eating My Plant. If I still haven't mentioned the bug or damage that you see in your garden, post a comment below and we'll answer it in part three, if there is one. If you like this video, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you can find out when our next video comes online. Consider becoming a Patreon subscriber uh, to support all the free stuff that we do here at Garden Nerd. And check out Gardening for Geeks, which will answer all kinds of questions for you, including what's eating my plant. Happy gardening.